Good morning, and welcome to Anderson's Knife Channel. This morning, I've got the 0460 tie by ZT. And we're going to be breaking it down, lubing it up, putting on some Loctite, and putting it back together. As you can see, I've, I've already loosened up these screws a little bit. You know, before I even started, I just wanted to, to make sure everything would go smoothly for this uh, for this video. So in case you're wondering why my, uh, my screws are a bit proud and the blade's a little bit off-centered, that's because I've already loosened things up. So without further ado, I'm going to go ahead and begin. So I usually like to start off with the pivot screw. So I'll be taking my, uh, my sweet little Weeha Torx screwdriver here. And I'll be using a T8 bit to begin. The pivot, most pivot screws I've encountered have been T8s. This pivot screw did not have any Loctite on it. I'm not sure if they're all like that, but mine didn't. So once I've got that off, I'll set that to the side and I'll grab my T6 bit. Now the T6 is pretty standard for a lot of these uh, body screws. And I, that's just my experience. Very few knives that I own don't use the uh, T6s for the body scales and then the, uh, the T8s for the pivot screw. That's just pretty standard in the industry these days. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and just pop that off. There's no real, I guess, technique. I just try to keep everything as simple as I can. Don't wiggle it too much. Just, you know, just shake it until something comes free. You don't want to bend anything beyond uh, beyond repair. So, go ahead and pop this blade off here. You can see the, the top bearing already came off. So, I'm going to place that here. That way I know that it goes to this particular scale. Again, I'm going to place that scale down there as well. As you can see, I kept the screws in the same position that they came off of the knife. That's just one technique that I like to use to, uh, to keep everything in its place so I don't have to go hunting screws and pieces and different things like that. Now this knife is pretty simple. It's not a whole lot of parts, but it's just a good rule to follow in general. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and tap that out. Everything seems pretty clear. I can use a little bit of, uh, a little bit of lubrication. In case you don't know, now you do. Real butter, bearing lube, it's the best for these knives. You know, a lot of people can use, uh, you know, whatever kind of oils and different things that they come up with, but this seems to work best for me. So I'll pop a drop or two down there. You know, maybe even get a little bit on the on the bearing here and just kind of rub that around. You really don't have to. This knife is um, this knife is fairly smooth already. But I just like to, to get it to its maximum performance. <laughs> so there's that. Okay, so there's uh, the first bearing in. Looking on the inside here. It's a little bit dirty. Go ahead and clean that out. I do have uh, some isopropyl alcohol on this on this Q-tip here. Um, go ahead and move this stuff out of the way. Now, I will put a drop or two in here. Just because it... Just because, you know... I feel like it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to kind of do the uh, the top part as well, just reverse order. Um, in case you you don't know by now, most of these bearings have two sides. You know, there's a proud side. You can actually see the bearings coming up there. Then there is the inside where you can tell that they're kind of recessed. So what you what you want one rule to keep in mind is you always want to have the proud side against the blade. As you can imagine, the wheels rolling on the blade. So that's that. It's also always a good idea to, when you're breaking a knife apart, before you move anything, look at how it's uh, positioned in there. That's just a good rule of thumb. And there's plenty of knives, you know, every now and then they'll, uh, they'll have a something new that you hadn't seen. And if you don't remember how you took it apart, it's so, some of them can be pretty much impossible to put back together, so that's that's just my advice. So anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and get a little pop a little something back here. Well, again, you really don't have to, but that's just what I like to do. 
roll that around a bit. Gonna take a look on the inside. Yeah, looks a bit dry. So I'm gonna put a couple of drops of some oil, or I should say my real butter, on there. And we're just gonna pop it back into place. Now one thing to pay attention to is the other side of this pivot. If it's not if it's a bit proud or sticking up, the knife will not be able to be centered properly. So just keep that in mind. So I've got that in there. Being careful. You always want to uh to be careful around these sharp blades because you know if you're anything like me, the sharper the better. So all of my knives are pretty much razor, razor sharp. So take this uh take this pivot here. Uh, of course I've got my T6 on there. Wrong. I'm gonna put my, my T8 back on. That's more like it. So I'm just gonna stick it in there like so. And you know what? I'm gonna go ahead and use two hands. I'm not trying to impress anybody here. So just a little bit of do you on this uh on this blue Loctite. Is this, this stuff is incredible. I think I, I I don't even think that I have screwed the bottom of this yet, and I've had this blue lock type for maybe two years now. So seriously, it doesn't take a lot. Let's get that back into the frame. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, pop that in there. I'm not going to uh, screw it in too tight, and that was uh, that was another bit that just fell out. Pop that out of the picture. I'll test it. Okay, just testing. It's proud, so the blade should be able to uh, to be centered properly. So now I'm going to go back to my uh, to the T6, get that on there, and and the, pretty much going to uh, put everything back the way I took them apart. This long screw will go in the middle there. Again, a little little dip and pull, scraping off any excess. Um, because you can see the backspacer is uh, kind of swinging back there, so I'm just tucking it back in to where it aligns with this with this screw hole. I'm sure there's a technical term for it. I do not know what it is, so I'm just going to screw down until I feel a bit of resistance. And that's it. No need to to tie it or to screw it down on uh, you know using all your strength. That's just unnecessary, and uh, it'll be that much harder to take your knife apart the next time it needs servicing. So again, I'm just going to go ahead and use the uh, the old nail technique here. A little dab, a little roll, scrape, and that's all I need. And that's actually plenty. So go ahead and stick that in there. Text, test my dexterity. Alright, going, going, and gone. Alright, so again, minimum tension. I just like to, to make sure everything's tied down. I can go back when I'm done and uh, adjust all of the uh, the tension properly. But right now, I just want to make sure that I've got alignment correct to make everything is, is feeling smooth. So I'm going to go ahead and try to evenly distribute some of that, uh, that, that real butter. And I can already tell it's doing a good job of doing so. I mean, just looking at it, this blade is darn near centered already. And it uh, does kind of look like it's, it's resting on the side a bit. But um, we'll go ahead and make sure everything is perfect. So just starting there, I'll try to let you guys see the, uh, the progression of the, of the blade centering as I'm tightening, tightening up this, uh, this pivot screw. So I'm just going to keep it there. Try to have it at an angle for you guys. Anyway, I don't think it was my battery. That's getting battery's getting a bit low, so I'm going to adjust that. I mean, I I barely barely twisted this screwdriver, and that thing is pretty much perfect on the alignment. But that does not mean the action is perfect. You do still have to test the knife. So without further ado, all right, that sounded pretty sweet. Felt pretty good. Let me rub off some of this excess oil here. Again, going with the blade. Never, uh, don't cut yourself on that blade when you're wiping it down. You know, just kind of pinch, but but loosely around the blade there, and you should should be able to wipe off any excess, etc. Okay, looking good, feeling good. I'm going to go ahead and give it a 
give it a test drop. Now my drop is a bit a bit sluggish. And I like a I don't I don't like mine to just free fall like a guillotine and chop your fingers off, but it does it does have to uh go down with the with a minimal shake. So I'm gonna back that back that screw off a little bit. Centering is still good. As you can see. And we're gonna go ahead and test it again. That's that's what I'm looking for. That right there. Good snap and a drop. Perfect. Well, there you have it, folks. That's the uh, cleaning and lubrication of the 0460 tie. I'm out.